Well, Richard, you tell me this time it's terminal, huh? Well, this week we we discovered that the steel boiler here has leaked onto the floor, and being as old as it is, it really wouldn't warrant trying to fix it. A steel boiler, you can often attempt to weld it, but a 25-year-old boiler in this condition, it wouldn't warrant But it. what's happened is not the jacket. What's happened is the inside tank, which is steel, has developed a leak. And really rusted right out, so, you know, the, the pretty much the steel has, has rusted right through. Okay, that blows the budget totally, but anyway, let's look at what... Uh, what new equipment has been brought on the scene? What we've gone into is a cast iron boiler. Um, the first thing you'll notice, certainly, Bob, is that it's much smaller. Mm -hmm. We've uh, had our heating engineer size this house based on what the actual heat loss is after you have done all your buttoning up and insulating. Uh, Just out of curiosity, what's the, the difference in BTUs between the old one and this new? It's about half. You know, we, we, we've tuned it right down to about half. Well, doesn't that seem crazy, considering that we've just increased the living size here at this old house by about a third, that the old furnace was still twice as big? But years ago, before oil became so expensive and people were w concerned with it, is that they used to oversize boilers by, by 50 percent at least. And as recent as 10 years ago, that was the case. But in no. the days of 20 cent oil. Sure. Well, tell us a little bit about how we're going to save money with this new equipment and how it's going to pay back for itself in, uh, what, one or two winters? Well, we hope so. This is a state-of-the-art, certainly, an oil burner, a flame retention head style of burner, which by combining with a high-speed motor um, uses less oil to get a hotter flame more compact. So that it's heating water more quickly and more efficiently and right. more economically. Right. This is a forced hot water system, Bob, with a circulating pump that sends the heated water through our three separate zones. One zone for our new living spaces, one for our sleep areas, yeah. and one for our basement zone. The future rumpus room. Well, if we've got three zones, how come we don't need three different pumps? What we've done with this system is we've had one pump and three separate zone valves to control those three areas. Um, I've got a, brought a sample one with me here to show you. When the thermostat calls for heat, it drives a piston down through to open this valve to allow the water to circulate through the baseboard and also brings on the circulator and burner. Okay, so it's basically a lot simpler than having mm -hmm. more pumps. Hey, you know what I was just thinking about was with our old green monster here, we had hot, domestic hot water via the tankless heater. What are we doing now? Well, with that system, it was a tankless, just as it sounds. No tank. No storage tank, yeah. And what we've got now is an exciting new idea, that, which is an efficient way of storing the hot water um, with a well-insulated tank. I brought a well, cutaway. This, the same as in an electric hot water heater or so forth. Right. The element is very similar in that it's heating within a very well-insulated space. It still uses the boiler water to heat the, heat the domestic water, but it heats it very efficiently and stores it so much better. Okay. So the, because the problem, I guess, with a tankless in any installation is that every time you turn on the hot water faucet, you're turning your boiler on. Yeah. And with this type of a system, we have a reservoir, a tank full of water, so that each time I open up a hot water faucet, I don't have to turn on the boiler. Right. It's a much more efficient way of making hot water. What about the life expectancy of something like this? Well, it's, this is a poly... hardly any metal involved, is there? Right. It's a polypropylene plastic tank, well insulated with a tough fiberglass cover, so it should last... Uh, indefinitely as opposed to a glass yeah. steel tank that yeah. will rust out at a certain time. Well, it's a new product to me. Let's talk a minute about what this is all costing us, Richard. What's, what's my new furnace costing? That installation is a little over $2,000 installed. Mm -hmm. I'm not surprised by that. And what about this, this uh, very modern new domestic hot water heater? This works out uh, to be a little under $1,000. I'd say the whole thing is around $3,000 for everything as you see it. Mm -hmm. well, there goes the budget, folks. Richard, thanks for your prompt and speedy work over here, okay? Glad we could get up.